Now, the January 2024 ban list seems like it may have buffed and nerfed a lot of decks. However, one deck that I feel like a lot of people are forgetting about are Dino. This ban list did so many things for Dino. Not only did Pangratops come back to two, but you have cards like Upstart and Mind Control coming back, which indirectly buffed the deck. On top of that, Goes and Match is now at one, which means it's another card that the deck loses to that you don't have to worry about any longer. So with that being said, I want to show you guys an OTK build of Dino for the January 2024 format. So I want to show you guys how Dino got such a big boost in the January 2024 ban list. Starting off with the most obvious one, Pancratops being at 2 is so helpful to be able to help you break boards and then it's also going to help you OTK as well because this in itself is a big monster. It also synergizes very well with something like Fenrir and that makes it really powerful as well because Fenrir we all know is such a powerful card going first, going second, helps you break boards, helps you add another layer of disruption. Very powerful card in Fenrir and it synergizes so well with that. On top of that, we got a card like Upstart back at 3 where it's Essentially, now we're playing a 37 card deck. And the reason this is so powerful, yes, Prosperity is a card that, you know, Dino historically played. However, now with Upstart Goblin, I actually would prefer that to play over Prosperity, especially in an OTK build. And the reason for that is because this deck can easily put up 9, 10, 11k damage. But with Prosperity, to OTK, you'd have to be able to put up 16k damage, which is really difficult to do. But if you're using Upstart Goblin once or even twice in a game, your opponent's at 10k, that's no problem. This deck can easily do 10k damage right so that's why i like the upstart because playing a 37 card deck especially in a deck like this one that always requires two card combos whether it's ov plus baby ov plus misc ground xeno plus baby etc etc there are so many different combos and you need the two card combo so upstart goblin helps you with that consistency as well and then lastly mind control is now at three and this is a great side deck option for you it could be in the main deck as a board breaker i just chose to play it in the side deck and i'll talk about that in a minute but this is such a very powerful card in today's format because you're going to be able to break boards which again is what this deck wants to do and then you can be able to use your opponent's monsters to help you link climb and then be able to otk in that sense right and i'll talk about why it's not in the main deck in a second here but let's get into the deck profile now i know i kind of went in depth with some of the explanations but uh, i really wanted to show you guys that this ban list indirectly did so many things for dino right so let's get into it of course we are playing three ov raptor the best normal summon of your deck so you have to be playing three ov we're also playing the one misc this card will come back. I promise you one day Misk will be at two or maybe even three. But listen, we got Pancratops back. I think Misk can come back, right? So the one Misk, of course, three BB as well as one Petite. Now you could argue to play two Petite. I just like playing the one. I don't want to brick with these cards in hand. These are cards that are complementary to a lot of your combos, but they don't actually start a lot of your combos. So that's why I think three baby as well as Petite is good enough. And the really nice thing is if you really need a baby or a Petite in hand, that's kind of where Fossil Dig comes in because this is pretty much three copies of any card that you're missing. And again, the really powerful thing with this deck is it's all two card combos. So the the thing is if you have ov plus fossil dig okay you may need ov plus misc but fossil dig is going to get you to misc you have baby plus nothing else in hand but maybe a fossil dig that fossil dig is going to help you to get into misc or ov wrap to start your combos right so that's why i think three baby one petite is all you're going to need two archosaur of course just to get you to your double evolution pill of course is very important two conductor tyranno very standard ratios here i would say as well as two pancratops helps you break a lot of boards it's good into front row and back row matchups which is really nice and on top of that if you can just special summon this it can help you just be able to push for more damage right so that's really powerful as well we're also playing the one giant rex of course this is just kind of like your extender it's the card that you're always going to want to banish off of pills so that you have access to another rank four monster potentially or more link fodder and then we're playing the one dogran a searchable kaiju is always going to be very powerful for multiple reasons one if you already have your full combo in hand this is the card that you're going to want to search and if your opponent doesn't stop the search then essentially you're going to be able to break their board with the dogran on top of that it synergizes pretty well funny enough with Arcosaur, because in a deck like this one and a really cool play that i found is that if you're able to get to your Dogran, whether you either draw it or you search it, whatever, you have Arcosaur on the board, you can use the Dogran, break your opponent's board, put it in the extra monster zone or right in front of it, I should say. Have your Arco on the board, whether it's normal summon or special summon, uses the fact pop a baby, search a pill, etc. etc. But rather than going into the standard link Kribo, you can even go to Animal, which is gonna help you break boards, and that's why, of course, Arcosaur plus the Dogran works really well. And then of course, we're playing the one Xeno Meteorus as well as the one Frostosaurus. The reason I'm playing Frostosaurus over the Fire Opal or some of the other ones is because if you're not using this as a rank six material which you can of course but if you're not using it for a rank six material it be going to the graveyard is very important firehead is really powerful because it plays around goes and match and one of the most important things with that card was like hey if your opponent has goes and match you can still summon the fire monster because your xeno is a fire right however the reason that's not as important anymore is because goes and match is now at one and keep in mind that's another card that kills dino and another indirect buff to dino is that cards that goes and match are no longer around or technically they are but they're only at one so it's very unlikely that you're going to be seeing it or the odds are, i should say are really really low right so that's why i think 
cost source just makes the most sense on top of that it's just the highest attack one right 2600 very powerful card then of course we're playing two double evolution pills searchable off of your arco if you hard draw one is very powerful as well three of the fossil dig getting you to any name that you need essentially any two card combo you want to get to it as fast as possible and this helps you do that ground xeno of course is another two card combo specifically this has to combo with a baby but ground xeno plus a baby is such an insane combo and that's why of course we're playing the two we're only playing two we're not playing three the reason we're not playing threes is because while this card is very powerful it doesn't really do anything with any of the other dino names outside of the baby or the petite which is why i think two is just a perfect number and the reason i like playing two ofs in this deck and you can get away with playing two ofs in this deck is because of three upstar goblin now i know i explained earlier why upstar goblin is so powerful but upstart does so many things for you being able to run two ofs and not worry about not having enough of them in your deck is very very much mitigated by the fact of having three upside goblin helps you draw into hand traps helps you draw into board breakers very powerful card and then we're playing two dd crow three ash and three imperm as our hand trap lineup so the reason i'm playing crow and ash in the main deck is i just think crow in general is so powerful in today's format it's good into tier limit whether you guys believe it or not even with kelbeck and Dagito gone people are still going to be playing tier limit so it's good into that it's good into unchained it's good into purely and it's just generally pretty good it gets a lot of different decks in the meta so that's why i like playing the dd crow on top of that it helps you get the non-dino in the grave for the double evolution pill while this typically isn't a huge problem because you do have cards in your extra deck that are going to help you link climb and you're typically gonna have a non-dino in the graveyard this is always going to be able to help you set up a non-dino right so that's why we're playing the ash the dd crow and the imperm then we're playing three fenrir in the main deck now fenrir is such a powerful card in dino one of course it gives you an extra body it being able to give you an extra body means you're going to be able to do more damage on top of that it's a board breaker for you when it attacks and it's a disruption for you if you're forced to go first now it works really well with pancratops and if anyone doesn't know why it works really well i kind of like to explain this in kind of these kind of videos so if you guys see these two cards right so pancratops and fenrir fenrir says if you control no monsters you can special summon this card now pancratops says that if your opponent controls more monsters than you not if you control no monsters if your opponent controls more monsters than you you can special summon this card why is that so good a lot of the time your opponent is not going to end on just a single monster they may end on two or three now if your opponent is ending on two or three monsters you can summon the fenrir to start your turn then you can still continue to summon pancratops because your opponent still has more monsters than you right so it synergizes really well in that sense and that's why i like playing the three fenrir and then of course the one harpy's feather duster i like to main deck this because you never know what you're going to run into and a lot of decks typically like to run at least a couple back rows so harpy's feather duster is good into that so 40 cards in the main deck the main thing i wanted to talk about here is consistency and the really powerful thing about this deck is with three fossil dig three upstart it's it's a very consistent deck which is really nice now moving on to the extra deck we are playing the one transcendosaurus giganto zowler i can't believe i said that name we're playing one of this it's really powerful 3800 does help you otk does help you push for a lot of damage and it's really nice when you're pairing it with something like cross sheep because if you're making cross sheep in some of your combos making this you can special summon back your ov or whatever and then you can continue your combos from there so that's really powerful we're playing the one of the lars one logia and one dolka we're not playing solda while solda is really powerful it's not super great right now and again you want to go second so that's why we're just playing one of these ones we're playing the one dugaris now dugaris is really powerful when you're going second helps you otk so dugaris is really nice link karibo secure gardener relinquished anima these are kind of your link ones for the deck these are the cards that you're going to be going into to hopefully link climb further not necessarily secure gardener but link karibo as well as anima so that you can get non-dinos in the grave and then gardener essentially guarantees that you get a non-dino in the grave because you can use a link karibo to make the gardener and then it's going to guarantee you get a non-dino right so that's why secure gardener is in here one cross sheep of course a generic card to make and then it works really well with the ground xeno combos we're playing the one dark the one ip mascarena one sp little knight now sp i know is kind of more of an expensive card you guys can swap this for any generic link two or link three or even a link four monster because where this becomes really powerful is when you're going second and you're being able to use mind control after side you side deck that becomes really powerful as well right so the thing is you need just generic cards for these kind of cards so that you can continue to link climb one unicorn like i mentioned one axis code talker and one appaloosa i don't think this needs too much explanation i think it makes a lot of sense essentially a bunch of link monsters that you can link climb into to help you push for more damage as well as break boards and then uh, the rank four monsters here are kind of like hey i wasn't able to otk you i can end on a dolka i can end on a lars and at least you have something going for you there right so that's it for the extra deck now for the side deck uh, again side deck is always going to be up to personal preference depending on what your locals is like however i just built a side deck that i think really works well for my area my region and that's three drone lockbird drone lockbird is absolutely insane against uh manadium which is a deck that never got hit on the ban list and it's a deck that i can see becoming more popular it's also really good into pendulum which is really powerful so pendulum is also another deck now that we have upstart back at three and servant i think is at three as well uh, that deck 
deck here to see some more play. So Drone Lockbird is really good into a lot of different decks. We're playing three Mind Control and one Change of Heart. This is just a board breaker for you. In matchups where you kind of don't want to play DD Crow or you may not need the Harpy's Feather Duster, that's kind of when these kind of come in because you know you're going to be playing against a lot of those monster matchups. You side these in, take your opponent's monsters, use them to link climb. You're going to be able to break boards. And if they make negates, they're forced to use the negates on these cards, which means now all your dino plays and all your other plays are going to go off as well. And I do want to say something that works with my control as well is you can summon your Pankratops going second then use mind control because you know you've already used the panker tops you summoned it your opponent controls more monsters than you bam stop a mind control take your opponent's monster right so it becomes really powerful in that sense change of heart as well lightning storm for going second against back row down matchups i think lightning storm is really good we're not playing evenly we're not playing dark ruler no more we want to be able to otk so lightning storm here is really powerful in that sense and then when you're forced to go first you play the barrier as well as judgment i think judgment is the best going first card in the game right now and then the barrier of course is really powerful as well into centurion into bestial runic into just so many different decks you just D barrier, you call fusion, you call synchro. It's just you're auto winning a lot of games with this, right? So that's why I'm playing the D barrier. But again, side deck is always going to be up to personal preference. Now, something I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I want to just talk about real quick now why are we not maining mind control? And that's because not every single matchup you run into is a matchup that you want to play playing mind control. Or same thing with change of heart. These are better, I believe, in the side deck right now because in the side deck, you can pick and choose the matchups where these cards come in. Maybe Ash is not as good against a certain deck, DD Crow is not good against a certain deck, Harpy's Feather Duster, etc., etc. And that's kind of where mind control changes of heart and whatnot comes in so that is it for the deck profile that is dino for the post january 2024 ban list we're not playing lost world it doesn't work in the otk builds going the first guess you want to play it going second don't play lost world all right that's my advice to you guys and uh, that's it for dino upstar golem being back at three this deck is so consistent so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope my explanations for my card choices made a lot of sense. Using the hand traps, you really want to stop your opponent from making very wide boards. And then you're going to be using the enablers that Dino has to both break boards and OTK every single time. And this deck does it so easily. With the consistency boost of Upstart Goblin, making this deck pretty much a 37 card deck, you're always going to see your two card combo and you're always going to be able to do a ton of damage. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we are uploading every single day in the month of december we're actually close to the new year so i mean we've done it and if you guys haven't seen it all make sure you guys subscribe because you guys can check out all the videos we've already done and all the videos yet to come so thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that thank you signing out peace